Sammy, there's a lot of questions here asking um, Madge has had his say on tier one and tier two status and what it means for uh, the Kiwis. And there's the Spring Farm Eagle, there's um, 394 asking, is there an equivalent that New Zealand could have to origin? So I'll ask you that question, Madge, knowing that we're going to our New Zealand audience as well now. Look, if I was to try and bring a, a game like that together, I think the Australian based Kiwis. Uh, could play the New Zealand-based Kiwis. Uh, I think that would uh, raise some um, quality conversations on, you know, uh, obviously, you know, the generations now have migrated across, and I remember uh, being a young pup as 18, and I had people like Johnny Lomax, Quinton Pongia, uh, then, you know, Ruben Wiki followed, Sean Hoppy. Uh, there's many a players that sort of basically have based themselves uh, over in Australia over time, and there's a lot of Kiwi players that are basically Australian-born, but still Kiwi heritage. Um, I think that would raise a bit of conversation about how we might be able to uh, develop a, a good pathway towards you know, the Kiwi jersey. Uh, look, the, the origin, New South Wales versus Queensland, has been a pathway for the Australian jersey, so there's a, no reasons why we can't develop a pathway for uh, the Kiwi jersey as well. Does that work, Sammy, in your mind? Yeah, I think so. I think that... Um you know, the, the system in a way that gets talked about here is maybe the Auckland-based players versus the rest yeah. of New Zealand, given there is just such a big base of Auckland players here. But um, once again, you know, having to having to convince everyone to, to leave their clubs and come over here is probably another conversation. But um, no, I do I do like the idea, and I think as well as, as more and more Kiwis, Pacific Islanders sort of get involved in the, in, in the NRL, um, I think we're crying out for some sort of yeah. representative, you know, period for those players um, that don't get to yeah. play Origin. So big fan. Sam, Sammy, I'm with you on that. I mean, we had, uh, you know, when they had the standalone sort of Origin, we had the uh, New Zealand, uh, the Kiwis, sorry, played Tonga. Mm. Uh, and, and I never forget sitting up in the coach's box. I actually opened the windows up, and the Tongan fans, uh, yeah, that embraced the game, uh, along with the Kiwi fans and the singing. Uh, it was a real spectacle for the game, um, mm. and it really, to me, I think it's great having that over in New Zealand because you know it's a growing game over there, uh, you know, and there's areas there where they're, they're looking at the moment to expand the game, and I, I can't really go into that, but I think it's an exciting place for. Um, rugby league in New Zealand uh, if uh, they get to where they want to get to and that's the growth of a lot of younger ones being able to stay uh, for longer periods of time in New Zealand rather than having to come across the ditch to be able to uh, play rugby league. I, I know you were uh, you were telling Madge my signature catchphrase which is vintage SJ uh, Jimmy a lot of text here on the uh, text machine from us Madge just saying uh, SJ who of course wasn't a part of the Kiwis World Cup team last year has sort of uh, been out of the Kiwis favour a little bit but he's he's stormed back in 2023 mate is he is he on your radar? Yeah Sammy I had a good conversation with Jimmy earlier on the show uh, about SJ um, big fan of SJ uh, you know obviously was a a big part of when I first arrived in the Kiwis to help me establish where they're at and uh, the progression of where we've got to now. And, um, you know, Shawnee basically said, unfortunately missed out on that squad of 24 in the World Cup. And he did say to me, Madge, I'll be back. So the way he's playing at the moment, uh, I can't see any reasons why he's not going to be in high contention of an opportunity when uh, the time comes for a test match. So are you an advocate of a second New Zealand side in the National Rugby League match? I think so. I think they've got the, the ability to be able to do that. Um, you know, it'd be nice to probably have a bit of a, a place down in the South Island, but uh, Sammy would probably know more around what population would be able to feed that because obviously there's a commercial part to that as well. But I think with the amount of players that are coming across um, and, and, you know, at a younger age, I'd love to uh, for a lot of the players to be able to stay in New Zealand. Uh, look, I'm a big fan of the old days where they had the Barter Card Cup and, you yeah, know, we've got yeah. the New South Wales Cup, the Queensland Cup. Why don't we have the Kiwi Cup and they can play that within New Zealand and go back to the days where we found people like Johnny Lomax and uh, Quinton Ponga and, and Ruben, the likes, to come across after they've established themselves within a competition like that. And, yeah, you know, we've got so many players coming out of New Zealand that help the NRL. Uh, so it'd be nice to be able to to give back and, and create something special for, for what they have over there as well. Uh, a couple of young players who haven't played for the Kiwis yet that have impressed them so far in the NRL this year. Yeah, I, um, I've got uh, Matt Tomoko and uh, Timiko, sorry, and uh, Seb Chris at the Raiders. They're, they're two that I could talk about, and obviously uh, I'm close with them at the moment, so I'll give them a little plug. But uh, look, I, I probably don't want to talk about too many others because there are a lot of kids out there that are starting to bobble through. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm creating lists and... Yeah, the big part for me is being able to get to those players more often. And 
I guess going back to your pathways, Jimmy, of how we can establish uh, more people and getting involved. And, you know, I've got people mm. um, like Steve Kearney, you know, potentially coming back in and helping out. Um, Nath Kalis being able to help out in, in the space of being able to find pathways and letting the yeah. Kiwi boys over here and over there know that, yeah. you know, the pathway to the Kiwi jersey rather than going off and thinking about a few other things that might be an origin, yeah. Junior Kiwis? When was the last time the Junior Kiwis played? That used to be, you know, whether it was under-18s or under-20s, they used to have the Junior Kiwis. Did that go away with COVID? Why do we not see that anymore, Matt? Yeah, Jimmy, I, um, yeah, it's a bit of uh, the bane in what I talk about in this space. I, I think uh, whether it's Samara and Tonga and for the Kiwis, look, I'd love to be able to get the junior Kiwis back involved. Uh, look, I'd love to see the schoolboys back involved. Uh, you know, I was talking yeah. to uh, the Australian schoolboys coach just recently talking about playing the, the Kiwis and then you know, having that established for a stepping stone to go into the JKs, which might be then transferred into a PMs or a, a Kiwi A team. And then we then have the progression into uh, the black jersey. Uh, I think you know, we need to make sure as a game that we develop that because there's so many opportunities of keeping players within our game. And for myself personally, it's it's understanding what the culture of what the Kiwis is all about. And I know uh, Christian Wolf's probably trying to create that with Tonga and Matt Parrish with Samoa and the um, uh, Wise with Fiji and many others. Uh, but, you know, I think it's giving more of an opportunity to our players uh, to understand what it takes to play at that level. Uh, and the only way you can do that is by playing in the games. Uh, it's a bit like mm. what I spoke about when you, you get to play in an origin uh, arena, well, you're going to become a better player because that's, uh, you know, it's an experience that you know, not many people get to do when you're playing above what an NRL uh, game is all about.